everybody, my name is Eli. My name is Jason. And we are the Yahoo and the Tour YouTube channel. And we know that your time is very valuable and we really appreciate it. And it seems like we might be missing a few people, Eli. Yep. Why is that? Uh, cows. They ran away. Our cows, yes. You guys know we from uh, those who watch this channel, we've had a tremendous... Lost like 16 cows, like dead, since the beginning of this year. Uh, Hasatan has completely raged on this family. He's completely made sure that we have, really, that he's trying to famineize us as a tribe. And yesterday, the cows broke out. What cows we have left broke out, and they took off, and they're somewhere. And everybody in the house was looking for them, and... Um, it, it was wild, and we were having, you know, we have 10 pit bulls, and they had, somebody's got some hormone issues or something, and so it's literally, I did not know if I was going to make it out alive yesterday. I, I really don't, and that is the tragedy with having 10 pit bulls and living the kind of life out in the middle of the jungle that we, we live, is that we never know if it's going to, we're going to, you know, we, we by the grace of our creator, we are here today and breathing, but today today enjoy what we have today because tomorrow is definitely not promised right Eli all right and so as we are uh, the, the boys are out um, with the other part of the tribe why are we doing this why are we doing this just you and me uh, because we need to feed the sheep like Yahoo. Well, we need to feed the sheep and we also while we were we were crying out to Yah yesterday we didn't exactly make an oath but I asked Eli, I said, hey, I, you know, I wonder if we do more of our Torah stuff, if we will have less curses and more blessings. And it just seems like the right thing to do. And so I guess it's only going to be uh, two of our five, unless Nicole can uh, pipe in at some point. But she's trying to patrol the dogs while we're trying to find our cows. And this is the story of our life. So thank you guys very much for being a part of our family. This is the Yahoo and the Torah channel. And this is Yah's channel all in all. So last time, we ended up with a lot of commands. And so I want to go over the commands to where we're at because I think we're at 30 now, I, uh, roughly. Yeah. You're, Eli, you're the only guy I have here. So it's going to be, you're, you're, you and I are going to have to talk a lot. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm All right. Eli's one of my shire of the groups. And so that's why he reads and the other guys usually talk. And um, same for Nicole. She doesn't really say a lot because she doesn't like videos and she doesn't like this stuff. But... Um, I guess I will be boisterous and loud enough for all of us, and we'll keep it rolling. So commandment number one, um, Eli. Be fruitful, to multiply. Commandment two, multiply. Commandment three, replenish the earth. Commandment, commandment four, four, subdue it. Commandment five, have dominion over all living creatures. Commandment six, the herb bearing in every tree is for food. Commandment seven, man and woman should build their own families. Now, Eli, make sure you're enunciating this so everyone can do this since it's just dad and, and Eli time. Number eight. Master sin. Very good. Commandment okay. nine. Every clean moving thing that lives shall be food for you. Commandment. That was nine. A ten? Commandment ten. Don't eat the blood. Don't eat the blood. Commandment eleven. Walk for me and be perfect. Commandment twelve. Guard Yahuwah's covenant. Commandment thirteen. Every male shall be circumcised at eight days old. Commandment fourteen. Teach your children the commands and guard the way of Yahuwah. Commandment fifteen. Remember Yahuwah's name for all generations. Commandment 16, keep the Passover. Maybe we can work on a little excitement. Keep the Passover. There's no exclamation point. Oh, there's no exclamation point. All right, that's, that's a good point. All right. Uh, commandment 17. Keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Okay. Uh, and? There's one Torah for the stranger and the Ebrim. Right. Commandment 19, sanctify all firstborn to Yahuwah. And what is it? this commandment? We do not know if this is actually going to be here further. So we don't know if like 20 will end up being 19 and vice versa. But for now, we have that there until we read a little bit more and figure out what that means. Because I, I still don't know if I should be shaving your head and, and sanctifying you and sticking you in a barrel. Board. Yeah, I know. <laughs> he's, he's the third board. All right. So commandment 20. There are no mighty ones before Yah. Okay. So this, these are right here. These are the new commandments that we found the other day. And um, finding new commandments is like finding gold. Um, I don't believe there's any other better way that we can go forward in this wild world that we are in unless we keep the laws, statutes, and commands of our creator. And it is not too hard to bear. That is a myth and a, a, a doctrine of men that is crazy, right? And so, I mean, when you say something like there are no other mighty ones before Yah, that's just a commandment, right? We know that there is one Elohim most high. He created all the heaven and the earth. 
and it is why humans are built to perfection is why we dogs are built to perfection is why you can look in nature and everything including our ecosystem uh, is beautiful right the entire world is beautiful it is only the system that is sick and the system composed of Hasatan. so commandment 21 do not bring Yah's name to not what does that mean Eli do not I like, take his name do not I like um, curse with his name. No curse with his name. Don't um, take oaths in his name. And it's just, I, I swear to God, or I swear to Yah, or something of the nature, right? Father, please don't attack me for that. It's simply an example. Commandment 22. Keep the Shabbat. Keep the Shabbat. And so we had subcommands, and I don't see all the subcommands. There's only one in here. Remember from oh. Exodus 16? Mm -hmm. There's more subcommands in here than this um, that we got previous, but the one in Exodus 20 is keep the Shabbat. And again, the, you will have a, an entire denomination of man-made religion that says um, Jesus is our Sabbath. We no longer need to keep the Sabbath anymore uh, because he's, he's a Sabbath. And, and, and it doesn't say that. It says from the beginning of the book to the end of the book that the Sabbath day is... What, what, is, what is the Sabbath day? What, what qualifications do we have, Eli? Um, it's a day of rest. It is uh, also what? what? What do we get from this day? If, 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 what do we get besides rest? Uh, we get blessings. Blessings, right, because there's and no other... if you other... don't follow it, you get curses. Right, yeah, and, and so your curses that you may get, you may not realize you're even getting cursed. You may just... It, life just may not be going down the direction that you are thinking of going, and it's simply a curse, right? It is simply that the, the will of the Creator is not is not with us because we are not keeping the Sabbath. And so it, the beginning of Torah keeping, I truly believe is keeping the Sabbath. Once you keep the day of the Sabbath, and it, it's a little awkward at first. I, I remember back when we first started keeping it. It was a little weird. We didn't know what to do. We were, we were half Judaizers. We were half not Judaizers. We did not know. Um, I mean, we literally started off ripping toilet paper um, into shreds. Um, and this is long. This is way too... This is what they say TMI is, but we... Uh, we since those days, we actually got boudets or B days. I don't even know how you say it, but it's the awesomest thing in the world. When we saw all the U.S. people running and, and fighting for their toilet paper, I decided there had to be a better way. And all of you folks in Europe and, and uh, I don't know if it's more civilized. I think it would be civilized countries that, that have toilets that shoot water on them. And it's your days of toilet paper over. But we were so messed up. We didn't know what to do. And so the places that we saw were like, well, you need to rip the toilet paper. I mean, the Jews even go so far as hiring the goyes, the, uh, the non-Jews to flip their lights on and do different things of that nature. And that is not what the Sabbath is supposed to be. As we come into the understanding of the Sabbath, it is literally a day of rest. And we're inventing, a, you know, the, the Jews have like hundreds of laws just for a Shabbat. And it's outside of the Torah. And so that, that is wrong. And so we got to keep it as the Torah says. And it's not meant to like harm us. It is meant to give us rest. And um, so we don't cook. We don't cling. We don't, uh, we really don't leave don't the premise. Yeah, we don't work. No servile work. Um, we do feed our cows um, because they do not feed themselves. And we go from there. All right. Commandment 23, Eli. I want you to say this with an exclamation point. Honor your parents. Yeah, that's the spirit, son. Um, can you say that one more time for me? Honor your parents. All right, kids. So don't forget, you guys need to honor your parents. And it is very important for all of us. Um, and it's a commandment. And there, there's a good reason, too. Sometimes your parents are wrong. Sometimes um, your parents don't have all the answers. Um, but if they're good parents, they're they're trying for the right ways and hopefully if they are good parents and they're in the will of Yah, they will figure out the correct way and, and what we need to do all right 24 do not kill don't kill all right next do not command 25 do not break wedlock okay command 26 do not steal yep command 27 do not do not make false accusations against your neighbor absolutely command 28 do not covet anything of your neighbors yep command 29 do not make an altar from rock that a tool has touched yep Command 30, do not go up to the altar by the steps. Okay, so I have questions on those. I know that you guys added these later. Um, what altar would we go up on? Twenty. So 29 and 30, if you're going to make an altar, right, you would not use metal on the stone, right? And you, you would not take a pry bar. And that, that's our crazy thing here is we, to get rocks out of the ground, we, we use a pry bar. So I don't know if you dig by hand or I don't know if we don't understand this commandment correctly. But if you're making an altar to Yah, which I mean, it, I don't, it's probably not a bad idea. You shouldn't be sacrificing things on it. Um, I, I don't think. 
um, just because you'd be offering strange fire. But um, if you, um, what's this last one here, Shogun? Do not go up to the altar by the steps. Um, don't have steps. Like when you have an altar, don't like have steps. You go up to it. With. Yeah, and so I don't know if this would actually. I don't know if this would be for us or not. These this list is going to be um, altered and changed a level a little bit. We will we will see what we need to do. Now we'll probably just do one verse since it's just Eli and I, and I really like to get the other boys in when we do these when we can, and we will because we did make this oath to Yah, or kind of an oath to Yah, but we will call it an oath because we are. One thing you don't want to do, Eli, is what. Uh, dis disobey Yah and like get cursed. Make, it, make an oath. Make an to oath and like break it. Break it, yeah. Okay, so we have Exodus twenty one. Now this is interesting. This is very interesting because um, Eli, this is. If we were in Yisrael, and if I, if we had slaves, if we lived in there, a lot of these, these are very much commands that we need to know, but they're not commands that we can actually do, because I don't know anybody that has slaves as of today. I, I know there's, there's, there's some slaves somewhere, I'm sure, um, but I think most people work, um, or, you know, it's, being in the rat race, I guess we're all slaves to the system. Okay. But we don't own people. And so when we read this one, we need to understand a little bit about this. Um, and so let's discuss. Let's get into it. Exodus 21. Now, these are the judgments which you shall set before them. And right. And so when we're talking about law, Yah's laws, statutes and commands, the judgments are in there as well. And so if we were living in a holy land, if we were living in the land of Yah, then we would have these kind of things. And with these kind of things begin in verse two. If you obtain an Ivory servant, so if you obtain a Hebrew servant, however that happens, again, that's probably not going to happen today in these days, six years he shall serve, and in the seventh he shall go out free for nothing. What is with that six and, and the seventh, Eli? Um, so it's like a Sabbath year. It's, like a, it's almost like a jubilee, right? In the seventh year, in the seventh year, everybody gets free, right? They're, they're taking their debts and they're... So basically, if you end up owning a Hebrew servant, they're yours... For six years, and then they go out for free. Um, verse three, if he came in by himself, he shall go out by himself. If he were married, then his woman shall go out with him. If his Adonai had, have given him a woman, and she have borne him sons or daughters, the woman and her children shall be her Adonai's, and he shall go out by himself. All right, so what exactly is that saying? So basically, if you have a Hebrew servant, and you either, if he comes in with a wife, that he will leave with his wife. You can't take his wife from him. And if he, and if you give him his wife, then he will go out by himself and he does not take his wife with him when he leaves. Right, so you could actually lose your wife at this stage, as well as your kids, right? Yeah. The woman and her children shall be her, be her Adonai's and he shall go out by himself. That's, that's, to me, a little weird. Does this seem weird to you? I don't know, because maybe they're, it's because they're owned by the master. Well, it could be. And so if you were, I, I guess it would be, they were breeding stock almost. And um, pay attention, Eli. You, your mama's got the dogs. All right. So that is um, that is very interesting, right? You, so, I mean, if you're, if, let's talk about this real quick. What is happening? So I, I take you in. You're my slave. Yeah. I have a woman. And I give her to you, yep. and you have kids, mm -hmm. and I kick you out in six years, or in the seventh year, your woman is no longer your woman, and the kids are mine as well. Yep. So it's like I, I've bred livestock, of, kind of, hmm. right? I don't, I don't know. Is it weird? Yeah. What do you think is weird? In this day and age where we're only used to one man, one woman, and in a marriage, um, and they've outlawed everywhere else, that's not the way y'all had it. But these are very interesting things, and you would, they've obviously had to happen for them to have these kind of judgments. All right, so verse five, and if the servant shall plainly say, I love my Adonai, my woman and my children, I will not go out free. Then his Adonai shall bring him unto the judges. He shall also bring him to the door or unto the door post and his Adonai shall pierce his ear through with an awl and he shall serve him forever. What does this mean, Shug? Uh, so Eli? basically- Shug's his middle name, folks. Uh, sorry, it's his nickname. Go ahead. So basically, if the slave loves his master, he wants to stay with his master and his wife and his children, he, he doesn't want to leave, then the master will basically put a all through his ear and he'll be like a permanent worker slave kind of thing. So what, what do you think an all through the ear is going to be like? Are we talking? Painful. Are we talking like a railroad track spike through the side of the ear or are we talking like a piercing I, I don't like, know. like most women have in their ear? 
what would qualify as an all through your ear? I think any kind of metal through your ear, right? I don't think Something. it has to be giant. I have no idea. So they bring him to the door. They put his ear to the door, and they put a hammer up there and a nail, and they drive it through. And you're, you're, so I guess that's. Uh, that's gotta hurt. It's gotta hurt. It does. It doesn't sound pleasant, but I guess if uh, life is good there, and you want to be branded by your by your master, then that's the way it goes. So very again, very strange things. We're not used to things like this, but. If we lived in a time such as this, or if we woke up and we happened to be like 3,000 years ago, this is the way it would be. All right, verse 7. And if a man surrenders his daughter to be a maid servant, she shall not go out as the men servants do. Eli, anything? Um, it's a little confusing. What's your, what's your, oh, you're reading the, the uh, you're reading it as well. Um, I don't know exactly what this would mean. I, a maidservant, I guess, if he if he gives his daughter up, which again is, is it seems very strange to us that you would allow your daughter to become a maidservant or something. But I guess it was different times, and I, I guess if you're, I guess if you're so broke, you can't even take care of your kids, and you find somebody who's going to be a good uh, master to your daughter or something. I guess that's how you would do it. I, again, I'm not familiar with these customs, and so we we are, you know, we're trying to play this one by ear, as they say, you know, all through the ear, play it by ear. I got it. All right. Yes, I know. It's a little different today, Eli and I. All right. Verse eight. If she please her Adonai, who has betrothed her to himself, then shall he let her be redeemed. To surrender her unto a strange nation, he shall have no power, seeing he has dealt deceitfully with her. Uh, again, um, if she, if she's a bad servant or something, say you give your daughter away and she is not a good servant, um, you're not supposed to to surrender her to a strange nation. What does that mean? Uh, basically don't like sell her to some other place. Yeah. Don't sell her to the Gentiles. Don't sell her to the heathens and have her in that kind of a world. Cause I mean, I guess it would be under different judgments and precepts and things. And, and, uh, I guess it wouldn't be good. But anybody who uh, has any other info on this, definitely leave it in the comments. We, we love to see your guys' comments as well. Verse 9. And if he have betrothed her unto his son, he shall deal with her after the manner of daughters. So there is hope for the, the female maidservant, right? Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully hopefully she makes it in the, that tribe that she's in. And, and it just seems like a almost a sad end to your daughter um, if, if it doesn't go well, right? If she's... Uh, I don't know if she's not a like a I don't know like a woman that somebody would want then she could end up in a a bad situation real bad. Mm -hmm. I don't have any other way to say that. Um, if he take if he take him another woman, her food, her raiment, and her duty of marriage shall not he not diminish. So she becomes a part of the tribe, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I guess again that's that's if you take another woman. Now that's a little weird too, right? If yeah. you take another woman, how would that go down in today's society? Not good, probably. I think the world is a lot more jealous than it was back in the day. Now, maybe not jealous, but we don't understand what it's like about tribe building. And um, it's very easy back in the day, Eli, to get wiped out as a tribe, right? If you only have, say, eight or nine of you guys uh, and you don't have a whole pile of kids and to defend the things, I mean, you guys could, you know, a raid of band uh, bandits could come by and, and kill you all and that's the end of the tribe. So I guess the bigger the better. And so I guess that's where jealousy would have to... Um, you would have to go for the, the benefit of the entire tribe's survival versus, you know, the jealousy. And, and there is jealousy because we've seen that um, with Abraham. And uh, was it Abraham? Uh, no, who, who was it? We had Jacob and we had Rachel, Rachel and Leah. Leah. They, they had issues. Um, and it's just, I'm sure they had to have issues. I'm sure it just wasn't clickety-click. All right. Um, are we on 11? Uh, yeah. Okay, and if he do not these three unto her... Then shall she go out free without money. Okay, so I guess she can kick her to the curb without paying her kind of any kind of uh, cash, which is, again, it feels a little, uh, I, you know, I, dude, hopefully she would go back to her father or something mm -hmm. or something of the sort or be free because the guy and, you know, she probably, the father probably sold her some horrible, evil thing of that nature. Let's go on. He that smites a man so that he die shall be surely put to death. Okay, an eye for an eye. Yep. Is this how we do this in this world? Um, no, nowadays you just go to jail. You go to jail, but you really, you know, you can go to jail for, uh, like a dude we just uh, heard about. Uh, he murdered a, a chick in his car and he got five years in prison, right? That's it. That's it. And now he's a motivational speaker teaching people tongues. It's crazy. It's the craziest world we live in. Yeah. Okay, and if a man 
lie in wait, not okay, if a man lie not in wait, but Elohim deliver him into his hand, then I will appoint you a place whither he shall flee. What does that mean? Okay, so basically in Israel they'll have a city of safety for if you accidentally kill someone, like you're chopping down a tree, your axe head flies off, and you kill someone, there's a city of safety that you can flee from. So what they call a revenger of blood, like one of the family members cannot come and uh, kill you. Yeah, and so the bro- like the brother of the guy you killed or something just is like, hey man, that wasn't an accident. You killed you killed. Johnny, and then they come and try to kill you. So there, Yah has actually provided a a place if you accidentally kill somebody, and I mean that would be a that would be a just a very horrible, horrible thing. Verse fourteen. But if a man come presumptuously upon his neighbor to slay him in guile, you shall take him from my altar that he may die. Okay, what does that mean? Take him from my altar. You have any idea? I have no idea. I don't either. Uh, this is where their tribe quorum is really good, and where the other versions and Eli and I are a little. Little down because we're both reading the exact same version of this Bible. So we don't know what that means exactly. Maybe Eli will go up in there. But um, I don't know why he would take him from his altar. To maybe take him away from anywhere close of, of Yah's altar or any anything of that sort. Um, all right. So as Eli's finding that, I'm going to go to the next one. And he that smites his father or mo- his mother, Eli, shall surely be put to death. Good thing I don't smite you. Yeah, that's a good thing. Yeah, definitely. It's a good thing we don't live in Yashrael as well. All right, so what did you find on that? Okay, so in the in another version of the Amplified Bible says, But if a man comes willfully upon another to slay him craftily, you shall take him from my altar, to which he may have fled for protection, that he may die. Oh, okay. So maybe you just ran and you grabbed a hold of Yah's altar because mm-hmm. you know the, the Revenger or the Avenger's coming for you. Yeah, get him away from Yah's altar. Then then what do you do? Then you slay him. Where? Uh, probably outside the gates. Yeah, because you shouldn't have blood and, and there's... Stone him outside yeah, the gates. You pick up some rocks, chuck it at him, and that's that's the way it is. That's how you deal with evil. Okay, um, okay, let's, uh, he smites his father and mother, Eli. <clears throat> okay, and he that steals a man and sells him, or if he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. What does that mean, steals a man? Someone, it's like a kidnap or something. Trafficking. Yeah. Right? Look at that. Look at the world of trafficking that we are in right now where people are being sold like that. And I guess there are slaves. I guess there are modern day slaves. But this is not a uh, this is not a a Hebrew slavery. It's not the, the yeah. kind of slavery that is in, in it's not the right slavery, I guess. Yeah, it's probably like if you take someone by force, you don't yeah. like buy them or something. Yeah, but you know the question is how do all these slaves end up in Israel to begin with? Somebody had to take them by force and they ended up there, but I guess now they're there, they fall under these rules and it's not it's not a horrible rule of being under a Hebrew slave style stuff. Um, could be worse. Uh, let's see. 18. 17. 17? Yeah. Okay. And he that curses his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. Good thing I don't curse you. That's a good thing, Eli. Yep. And so that's, that's again, we need to make sure that we are, um, we are being respectful to our mother and father, right? We shouldn't ever do that. And if, a men, and if men strive together and one smite another with a stone or with his fist... And he die not, but keeps his bed. What does that mean? Keeps his bed. Oh, it's just that in mind, Say, too. Keeps his bed. All right. So you don't, uh, you don't, I don't know. If he rise again and walk abroad upon his staff, then shall he that smote him be innocent. Only he shall pay for the loss of his time and shall cause him to be thoroughly healed. All right. So uh, two guys are striving together, Eli. One guy beats the crap out of the other one. Or actually, this is this is with a stone or with his fist. Um and I guess that, you know, back in the day, they beat people to death. I mean, it, it says and he dies not. Um, I would hope the guy didn't die. You'd hope you could have a, a peaceful fist fight and, and yeah. walk away with, uh, you know, the best man wins. And, you know, pick the other guy up when you're done or something. Um, but uh, here's, the, here's the rules for that. So anyway, um, that is what you do. I don't know about keeping his bed. I guess the guy's alive. And if a man smite his servant or his maid with a rod and he die under his hand, he shall surely be punished. Now, it doesn't say what punishment is, Eli. Mm-mm. What do you think that would be? Um, either put to death or something. I, don't I, think it's, I think it's whipped. I think when it says surely punished, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, it seems, it seems evil and cruel that we're even saying stuff like this, right? Mm-hmm. Like you're going to beat a servant or you're going to beat another human being. It's just, uh, it, it just seems like a bad people or something. I don't know. Um, maybe there's servants that deserve it, but at the end of the day, can we just sit down and have this chat or something like that? Uh, I, I don't know. Maybe not. Okay. Notwithstanding, if he continue a day or two, he shall not be punished for he is his money. What does that mean? 
Uh, basically, if he, like, so if he smites him, but he doesn't die immediately, he still, like, lives for a day or two, the master wouldn't get punished for anything. Yeah, and so I guess you can kind of beat your slaves as long as you don't kill your slaves, I guess is the, is the point of this. And again, these are these are things that if we lived in the land of Yisrael many, many moons ago, right? This is not something for today because we wouldn't have this. And um, I'm not sure beating your a slave is, is loving your neighbor. I, I don't know. This maybe she's me. All right. If men strive and hurt a woman with child so that her fruit depart from her, yet and yet no mischief follow, he shall surely be punished according as the woman's man will lay upon him and he shall pay as the judges determine. Okay. So if, if men strive and hurt a woman, so if you're sitting there duking it out. And a woman tries to stop you or something. Well, it didn't say or, that. Or, or you the, fly or she into like her. Or she gets caught up in it somehow. Or she's pregnant. Yeah, get caught up in it and the guys run and, and you know, get mixed up with her. And um, her fruit depart from her. So she loses her baby. Mm -hmm. And yet no mischief follows. What does that mean? She, uh, mine says yet no further damage follows. Further damage? The kid's dead, Eli. How's, how's that? I mean, that is just... I guess just, she's not injured. Is she, yeah, I guess she she lives to bear another uh, another day. My dogs are going crazy. You know? That's just the way it is. So, he shall surely be punished according as the woman's will, woman's man's will lay upon him. Now... It mine says a fine to be paid. A fine to be paid. Man, I would... You know, some of this says a tooth for a tooth, man. If you, if you killed my kid... Life for a life. A life for a life is what I would feel, but you know, Yah has things differently, right? These would be the judgments that we would we would only be able to find this guy. I mean, how would how would you find this for a life? I mean, you would never ever be okay, ever be okay. So I don't know, um, crazy stuff. Let's just continue on. And if any mischief follows, follow, then you shall give life for a life. Okay, mischief follows. Lady gets so, die. So if she dies, then you take the life. The but then you've lost two lives. Then if lady dies, you've lost the baby and the the wife. Do you go beat up somebody else? Do you go take another life, or is that it? I don't know. You only get one life for a life. I, I, I don't understand some of this stuff, but that's y'all's stuff. Okay. Eye for an eye. Tooth for tooth. Hand for hand. Foot for foot. Burning for burning. Wound for wound. Stripe for stripe. Imagine that, Eli. A world that we have right now. If you if you went and stole something, um, not even stole something. Say you went and you committed an atrocity and chopped my hand off. Cute. I would chop your hand off. Yes. Yeah, that's what it would. So we would both get to live life with no hands. Knock my tooth out and knock your tooth out. Well, yeah, a tooth for a tooth. How would you do that? Grab a hold of the guy's tooth, rip one tooth out, or would you like so. punch him in the mouth? How would you do this? What happens if you knock two of his teeth out when you, no, he I only guess, knocked one out? No, I guess he knocks another one out. <laughs> this isn't good. I can see this going downhill. <laughs> it just keeps getting worse. I it, keep on knocking another it one It does keep getting worse. This could be bad. But I'm sure there's rules. I'm sure that this is not what it means. I mean, we're, we're they're finding a little humor in this stuff. Um, this is we're not trying to be disrespectful in any way. It's just that this is not our culture, and so when we're trying to learn about things that we don't know about, uh, it's it's strange. So burning for burning, you burn the guy, he burns you back. Wound for wound, stripe for stripe. Okay. And if a man smite the eye of his servant or the eye of his maid that it perish, he shall let him go free for his eye's sake. All right. Well, that's one way to go free if you're a slave. Yep. You go blind. You'd be like blind eye Joe or something. Walk off, there'd be nothing. So anyway, that's that's the law, right? If if you put out the eye of your servant, a man smite the eye of a servant or the eye of his maid that it perishes, um, they get to go free. I, I, that's probably a good thing. And if he smite out his man's servant's tooth or his maid servant's tooth, he shall let him go free for his tooth's sake. Is that what yours says? Yep. That's interesting, right? So I guess teeth are a very important thing. You knock a dude's gorilla. Now, Eli. I remember when you were young, you threw a hook into the back of it. You knocked my tooth out. Not meant to be a hook. Oh, is that, <laughs> it was supposed to be a rear naked choke. You're trying to choke me, but you accidentally knocked my tooth. Oh, well, I chipped it. Chipped it, it is true. <laughs> and I still have that chip to this day, Eli. <laughs> How old were you, Eli? Three or four? Some, I think so. Some amazingly small age number. And I'm like, my, my tooth. <laughs> Eli, you knocked my tooth out. All right. Um... 28. 28. If an ox gore a man or a woman that they die, then the ox shall be surely stoned and his flesh uh, shall be eaten. But shall the not be eaten. Oh, shall. It says, wait. Oh, shall not be eaten. Right. Sorry. Um, I'm watching your mother go chase the dogs. Um, but the owner of the ox shall be innocent. Um, okay. So why wouldn't you eat the ox? Um, it, because it's like evil. I don't know. I don't the, know. The ox killed the man or woman. That they died, right? And so that, that's possible even with a cow. Mm -hmm. Ox is just a little bit bigger. Um, wonder why his flesh is not eaten. But the owner of the ox shall be, shall be innocent. 
So I guess you can have a violent ox and it can go kill somebody and you're good. Just don't eat the ox. Yep. But it just killed a man. So how's that an eye for an eye? I mean, I mean, unless... Well, it, it's a life for a life because you kill the ox. <laughs> I, I guess. Is that the same thing? I don't know. That's what I can think. All right. 29. But if the ox were wont to push with his horn in, the ti in time past... And it has been testified to his owner, and he has not kept him in, but that he has killed a man or a woman. The ox shall be stoned, and his owner also shall be put to death. All right, so if you have a violent oxen, and you haven't learned how to fence right, and, uh, I mean, how, how do you stop an oxen from going through a fence, Eli? We can't Cat, even keep... Lock it up. We can't even up. keep cows from going through our fence. At least our cows are not violent. But um, here's that's a problem, right? If you, I guess that's a reason you should probably like be really nice to your animals. And I guess if you don't get an oxen as a baby, and he becomes a violent oxen, or he's like one of the ones you, you gotta like, that's a problem, right? Anything mm -hmm. that, and so if your ox breaks out before, and you've gone to the owner and said, "Hey, this oxen is mad. This is a mad cow, right? We, we you might get mad cow disease here, and mad cow disease would get him killed, right? Very interesting. Thirty. If there be laid on him a sum of money. Then he shall give for the ransom of his life whatsoever is laid upon him. Clear enough. Okay. Whether he gored, he have gored a son or have gored a daughter, according to this judgment shall it be done unto him. If the ox shall push a manservant or a maidservant, he shall give unto their Adonai 30 shekels of silver and the ox shall be stoned. Wow. That's the same price as Messiah, right? Mm -hmm. 30 shekels of silver. That's what they sold Messiah Yahushua for. Mm -hmm. What's that? Okay. Okay, so we're getting, we got to finish up, Eli. The, we got to get you out there so <laughs> the cows have just run amok. Okay, um, if a man shall open a pit, where are we at? 33. 33. If a man shall open a pit, or if a man shall dig a pit and not cover it, or an ox or his donkey fall therein, the owner of the pit shall make it good and give money unto the owner of them, and the dead beast shall be his. And if the ox of one man hurts the ox of another, that he die, then they shall sell the live ox and divide the money of it, and the dead ox also they shall divide. Okay, there's food. Or if it be known that the ox is used to push in the time past, and his owner has not kept him in, he shall surely pay ox for ox, and the dead shall be his own. All right, everybody, we are having emergencies. Um, we love you all. We appreciate everything. Um, we are going to wrap this up so that we can go chase the cows. And Eli, do you have anything? Uh, read your Bibles. Okay, read your Bibles. Take off, Eli. Shalom. Much love, everybody. Shalom.